Hello, welcome to another version of the Tier Maker ranking the 2023 Carlton Football Club list. So this will be the third time I do this this season. Did one at the start of the year, mid-season, and now at the end of the year. Um, I actually remember doing this in the middle of the year. It was so salty. I was so mad. We were all so broken. Um, and it was interesting to see which players lifted and which players dropped. Um, I think what's important to note with this tier maker ranking system is depending on how you define your tiers will determine where your players end up. So for me, tier one are players who irrespective of form will play if they're fit and healthy they're guaranteed to be playing in the team if I was picking the team anyway. Tier two, you will see players who are not that far off tier one, not absolute certainties, and that'll reflect in the way in which their seasons played out. There were times in which they were fit and healthy and just weren't playing in the starting 22 or may have been the sub. So I would say tier one guys do not be the sub. They are they are starting players. Tier two, that next la uh, layer below. Tier three, obviously next layer below. Tier five are the guys where there are either development players or you'll see shortly they've been delisted. So uh, at the end of the video, I'll put the link in the description and you can create your own tier maker. Do it. All the players on the list are there. Send it to me and we'll have a, a look and see how we rate the list so let's get to it. What you're about to see is my live reaction. So it actually took me a while to figure it out. I, could, I kind of started and then it wasn't until I visualized the entire picture that I started moving pieces. So just bear with my reasoning and at the end, you'll get the final result. So let's check it out. Okay. What I think I will do is those who I know are leaving already, we will just put them in tier five. So O'Brien, Plowman, we know Philp, and we know Honey. Might just group them together and wish the boys all the best. So Sam Durden, hmm. I, I just don't see him playing unless Weedering, McGovern, Marchbank, like all of these guys were injured. So is that fair and reasonable to put him here or is that more of a tier four? I don't really think it matters. I'm just going to keep him here. Murkov, Alex, oh, I don't know where he's at with this heart condition and I don't know where that lends him in the sense of playing. But nonetheless, this is a real development tier anyway. So, and I don't expect anybody in this list to be playing when that's kind of where it ended as well. So Dom Aquay, Harry Lemmy, this is where it gets interesting. So Lockie Fogarty, wow, did this mid-season and he was just nowhere to be seen. He definitely comes up here for now and then we'll reassess in a minute. Uh, Bins, Carroll, Cowan, Boyd. I mean, I think Boyd, I think Boyd just comes straight up here. I mean, he played in the prelim. That's kind of where he sits. I forgot to move on Ed Kerno as well. So we'll wish Ed all the best. So these three here, th these are the three. I would love all three of them to start playing regular football. We're going to touch on Fisher and Dow in a minute. But if we lose Fisher and Dow, we've already lost Ed, Ed Kerno. Uh, these are guys that have played double-digit games, some of them. So we're going to need Carroll especially to make a bit of a quantum leap and get himself into here next year. Uh, Bins in his second year showed a lot of promise in his first year. So we're going to need to see that. And, and I, you know, Cowan's got the capabilities as well. He, he started the season in the team. So um, this these three are, are really really big pre-seasons coming up for these three in particular because I expect one or more of them, if not all of them, to be in here. So Boyd, comfortable with where that sits. That's a pretty good story there, the way we picked him up and, and where he's come from. Same with Fogarty. 
Chin Cotter, I did not have him on this list when I did it in the mid-season. Bit of disrespect to the to the Pom Cotter. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, mate, played in the prelim, you know? So uh, I think he sits in this group here. Fish, it's tough. Looks like he and Dow, at the time of filming this, strong reports from the media that the two of them will be leaving. And look, I think I might have had Fisher in tier two at the end of 2022, given uh, the good season that he did have. I, I, like, I still think he can offer something to the list. He can play games and contribute. But I think there's a few too many ahead of him. Uh, probably same with Dow. I think he's capable of playing games for us moving forward. But you know, he wants some job security unless Nick Austin and the team have some plans as to who's going to replace them. As I mentioned, you know, from these three here, we're going to have to replace the games that these two would have gotten, plus whichever draftees come in, plus if there's any free agents. So I'm comfortable with where the two of these sit. Cunners, ooh, Cunners. I'm tempted to put him up on tier two. If Cunners is fit and healthy, for the most part, I think he's in the team. His form dropped off at the very end, which suggests to me that he's a bit too good to be with this group here. Mm, I think I'm talking a little bit more on potential, maybe a little bit further up on this list as opposed to in tier two. Maybe we can revisit that. Um, Jesse Motlop, oh, he may be up here. Yep. 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 Wow. Big. Mate, kicked over 20 goals in the year. It's exactly what we needed from him. He may be here. That's, that's where I sit with him. March Bank right here. Oh, I'm so grateful to be saying that. He was massive in the prelim. Get a full preseason into him. I think all of a sudden, as you can see there, Weedering and Marchbank are, you know, one and two. Last year, it was Weedering and Young, and that's where we have the cover now. Touch wood, if something was to go wrong here, Lewis Young can fill a role. McGovern can play a bit more key position, one-on-one -on -one if he needs to, Kemp, and then that's where you might be using a, a Sam Durden here. Oh, is that stiff on Sam Durden? Is that stiff? That could be. Might put him here. Eh. Eh. I'm going to put him up here. It's a little stiff. Well, Ed Kerno gets, uh, he's here, by the way. Just the way that the, the camera is showing it. Anyway. Um, okay. Jack Silvani. I think that's kind of where he sits. I think he's a level below these guys. But still, on any given week, anyone from here could be playing games. And they did. Dirds, probably the same. Um, always the same, no issue there. Cottrell, I get the feeling he's a bit more important than what he was when I did this last time. Maybe not too much so to put him up here, but I really like what he did. I might get him right, right in near the top. What he's been able to do and where he's been able to take his career, knowing year after year he gets better. Really excited with another preseason, hopefully not interrupted like the one for 2023. Holly Hollands, huge. Could borderline put him here. Huge, huge what we saw from him. Kemp as well. <laughs> They're all going to end up in the same spot. <laughs> Kemp as well. Lewis Young fell a bit. This is an interesting one. Like I said, really strong situation to be in. Especially now that March Bank is healthy, Lewis Young has kind of fallen into that. He's sort of fallen in the pecking order, but I, I just think it's a great long-term view. Let him fight his way back into the team. Let him figure it out. He's still very young, uh, relatively speaking. Had a really good first year with us. May have been some chemistry issues. May have been some form issues, some confidence issues, you know, disposal by foot. So, but these things you can clean up with commitment. So I like him there. He could play for us if we needed him to and we trust him. Same with Pitto, TDK. This is the debate. 
such a big debate. We might do a separate video on this all together because sometimes I think it should be Pido with a smaller Ruckman. Other times I think it should be De Koning with a smaller Ruckman. And other times I think it should just be the two of them. I think it just depends on who we're playing. Already touched on Camp Cunners. Yeah, next year, I think De Koning's the one. He's really starting to enter the sweet spot. Played some pretty good finals uh, considering where he's at with his career. And he's just about to enter into that sweet spot, I think. So we touched on Marchi, touched on Motlop. This is a really good one for us. Really good story. Uh, just so dangerous. Obviously a bit quiet in the prelim, but he had solid moments in the other finals. Jack Martin. So based off my own definition... Tier one, if fit and healthy, are definitely playing. And I think if Jack Martin is fit and healthy, he's definitely playing in the Carlton team. No question. I don't see a question about it. So I'm going to put him there. Okay, that kind of messes up with the format, but that's fine. <laughs> we'll figure it out. <laughs> So Martin up there, George Hewitt. If George Hewitt is fit and healthy, is he definitely playing? I don't think it's the case like it was only 12 months ago. It's the closest one I can think of, I'll be honest. He's like the closest one. I think we had moments this year where he was fit, maybe out of form, and wasn't playing in the starting 22. And that's the that's the, the criteria for tier one. If you are fit and healthy, irrespective of your form, are you in the team? <sighs> Tough. Tough. I'm going to leave him at the top, at the top of tier two. Sorry, Gov. Uh, Kennedy... Well, this is the thing, Kennedy and Hewitt. There, there was that patch in the season where it was kind of one or the other. And that's where I'm getting a little confused. Now, based off my own theory, I think if Zach Williams is fit and healthy, he is a absolute guarantee to be in the Carlton team. I don't know why I didn't have him there from the beginning. Maybe my definition's changed, but I'm just... I was a little bit angry at how the boys were playing. So I tried to punish them a little bit. So Zach Williams, if fit and healthy, irrespective of form, is he playing? Yes, absolutely he is. Absolutely he is. Acres, you could even mount a case for Acres as well to be in that exact same description. Fit and healthy, is he playing? The answer is yes. The answer is yes. I don't think he was dropped at all this season. So McGovern, if McGovern is fit and healthy, is he playing in our team? The answer is yes. Irrespective of form, the answer is yes. No question. I feel like I'm going to need to remind people watching, this is not tier one in the AFL. This is just our list. If we are playing a game tomorrow, these are our first, what I believe to be, our first choice players. If fit and healthy, first choice. Absolutely first choice players right there. This is the next layer. Oh, I could mount a case that Marchbank could be here, but I think that might be pushing it a bit based off what we saw. We've got to give him some room to grow, to grow there. Uh, I've got no issue with these guys. I wouldn't drop any of these guys Below, I mean, we saw it. Some, if not all of these players were out of form at some point in the year, maybe apart from Chera, and they still played. Um, this is that next layer. Really excited about Jesse Motlop. Really excited about him. I really cooled the Jets on the pressure on him, but I'm stoked. This is that next layer. I think maybe De Koning should be here and Pido. Because they are our ruck, I mean, by default, they are our guys, they are ruckmen, they are, it's one or the other or both. So I think they should be here. And I think that makes a bit of sense. Still feel like Cunners is a bit stiff to be here, potentially. Uh, 
No, you know what? Because out of form, got dropped. Oh, you tell me. You tell me in the comments below. Where would you put Cunners? Mm. No, nah. Cunners, I'm going to do it. I think it's, I, I just doesn't, it doesn't sit right. It doesn't feel right with me having him in tier three. I'm going to have to revisit some of these. Let's have a look. See, there's 20 between tier one and 20 and tier two. I think this is kind of there, kind of there. I think you can mount a case that Cottrell can be here. I'm going to do it. Yeah, it's got to be done. It's got to be done. Maybe even Hollands. I mean, we love his run, don't we? Yep, yeah. going to do it. Hollands. And then I think even Kemp. Yep. Tier two. I mean, like Kemp played quite a few games. He played he played 17 games, mate. So I think this is a better balance. Could mount a case that Jack Silvani should be there as well. Silvani so played 16 games. Mm, okay. Yeah. So if I look at this, the bulk of our selections came from tier one and tier two. And that's kind of where our list is. These guys are, you know, undroppable to an extent. I think Acres earned the right to be there. These guys for the most part, play. I think Hewitt might be a bit stiff to be here, but I still think that's where it sits with me. I have an instinct of it. And I do think that these guys are a level above these guys. Oh, could be unfair on Owies. Eighteen games, twenty-seven goals. It is unfair on always. I think always is ahead of, he performed ahead of these guys here. <clears throat> yep. Let's do it. Done. It's done. <laughs> yep. I think this is right. I think. A few line ball, you could really argue Hewitt can be there. But I think this is right. These guys, undroppable, irrespective of form. These guys make up the final couple of spots. <clears throat> These guys, building. Not first selection. I know that Chincotta and Boyd actually played in the prelim. So does that go against what I just said? I don't think so because I think again, if everyone is fit and healthy, that's where I'm I'm seeing this. Like these two layers here are the bulk of the players that play every week. Um, I know that some of these guys finished really strongly, particularly these three. They finished really strongly to the year. I just have a sense that that's where they they settle. These guys here, up and coming, breaking break glass in case of emergency and these are your development players slash delisted players slash retired players i think hudson o'keefe would be here as well if if he's if he's on this list so yeah we're gonna end up here this is it okay there you have it there is my list please leave a comment what would you change where would you put players in a different position? Let me know in the comments below. Or if you want to send me your version of 
your tier maker, please do. Uh, the link is in the description. You can move the players as you like. Send me a photo of your your tier maker and we'll have a chat about it. Otherwise, see you in the comments. Go Blues.